God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual Bible class. I'd like to express gratitude to the members and friends who came out on Saturday to the Pull Up Musical and also on Sunday uh, with praise in the parking lot. I believe this word, brothers and sisters, is important tonight because it seems like we have gotten away from it. And I believe that it is imperative tonight that we uh, discuss this important subject. Tonight I want to talk about come back to holiness. Wait a minute. Don't cut me off. Don't tune me out. Because this applies to the pastors, preachers, and parishioners. Come back to holiness. Two passages of scripture I want you to turn to tonight. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 19. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 19. Also, 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 1. Romans, chapter 6, verse 19, reads tonight, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. In other words, the weakness of your flesh. Sometimes the flesh get weak. And here Paul is saying, I consider, I understand that sometime the flesh is weak. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. In other words, iniquity means wickedness. So you've moved from wickedness to wickedness, some of us. Even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. It reads thus, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I want to talk about tonight. Come back to holiness. I've been in the hospital, and perhaps you have too, and in the hospital, cleanliness is very important tonight. In fact, the closer you get to the operating room, the more important it is. Doctors in an operating room are very concerned that the scaffold not only is not dirty, but that tonight is not even dusty. Why? Because the smallest amount of impurity can contaminate the procedure. Just a little bit of dust or dirt contaminates the procedure. Great effort is made to sterilize the equipment so that all impurity is removed and no infection sets in. If human doctors tonight go through great detail in an operating room to make sure that the environment is totally free from contamination, then ought it shock us that God himself must function in an atmosphere of holiness. Repeat after me, holiness, perfection. Repeat after me, perfection and cleanliness. Repeat after me, cleanliness. If human doctors tonight recognize you can't do surgery with contaminated devices, then it ought not make us too upset. I know it don't make me upset that God can't do the surgery in our lives that he wants to do without sterilizing our lives first. 
Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. I want the Lord to operate in my life. I want the Lord uh, to perform spiritual surgery in my life. I want the Lord to work on me. And I know that he can do it, but he wants to operate to employ people that are clean. I want you to get this. Holy. Sanctified. As believers in the body of Christ, we need to come back to a continuing study of the scriptures, a maturing habit tonight of prayer, a growing sensitivity to the needs of others. Do not be selfish, but be selfless in serving the Lord. We need to come back to a personalized method of witnessing to a fulfilling of all vows and pledges. When you make vow, you ought to make sure that you keep that vow of pledge that you make to paying our tithes and offerings to a continual expectation of the Lord's return. But most of all tonight, we need to come back to holiness. The Greek word, is hagiosmos. Repeat after me. Hagiosmos. Say it again. Repeat after me. Hagiosmos. It signifies separation to God. We are to be unspotted from the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. Listen, we are divided from the rest, distinct. Not united. The Bible tells to come ye out from among them. I don't care if it's friends, families, or foe, family or foe. Come ye from among them, buddies. It don't matter, co workers. Come ye out, neighbors, from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 says, For this is the will of God, the will of God. Now, you do not want to live holy. Now, just admit it. Your flesh, my flesh, do not want to live holy. But tonight, of God, the desire of God, the plan of God, the purpose for us to live holy life. He says, even your sanctification, in other words, to be separate, that ye should abstain from fornication. Fornication means voluntarily, watch this, you participate in sexual activity when you're not married. But let me give you another fornication it means idolatry I know you didn't know that did you perhaps some of you did it means idolatry that you are worship means to worship idols mean that you are putting something or someone before God you are being loyal dedicated and committed to something or someone other than God it also suggests unfaithful let me say this tonight, that all of us in here, and nobody can point the finger virtually tonight, all of us have, have been, has been unfaithful. But we can praise God on tonight that God has been faithful to us, and we can say tonight, great is thy faithfulness. We are new. Morning by morning. It's by his mercies that we're not consumed. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. What vessel are you talking about? In the Old Testament, you used to have scarred vessels. Vessels that you didn't touch. Matter of fact, it was a king, Nebuchadnezzar, or Belshazzar, one of them who took those scarred vessels. 
those cups and desecrated those cups. Those cups were separated by God for the children of God to use. Often Sister Walker would say, Pastor, this is your cup. She would keep that cup clean so when I got ready to use the cup, it would be, watch this, not filled with dirt. <laughs> it would not be unclean. It would be ready for use. You are vessels of God. You are a vessel of God. We are vessels of God, rather. You are a vessel of God, and I am a vessel of God. In sanctification, mean consecrate. You know, we have consecration service at the beginning of the year. But let me tell you something. Don't wait to 2021 to consecrate yourself. You need to consecrate yourself now unto the Lord. Means to purify, to make holy. You know, water purification, you know how they put an object on the water faucet because of the impurities that come out of that water. They put on a purifier. Matter of fact, we have a pitcher in the house that we fill it up with water and we put a purifier on top of it to keep impurities from coming out of that water into our mouth. Consecrate. Purify to make holy in sanctification and honor. Honor. What do you mean, Pastor, when, when you say honor? What is the writer saying here? He's saying tonight integrity in one's action. We ought to be people of probity. What do you mean when you say people of probity? People of probity means uprightness. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, there's no good thing, ladies and gentlemen, that God will withhold from them that walk upright. They're going to talk about you, laugh at you, call you church boy, church girl, call you square. They're going to call you all kind of names. But it don't matter what you call me. I am determined to live sanctified. I'm talking about keeping my vessel, my body sanctified and honorable in the sight of the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, follow peace with all men. Be at peace. With men. First of all, you got to be at peace with God, then be at peace with yourself, then you be at peace with men. But you know, when people are not at peace with their brothers or sisters or other people because they're not at peace with themselves and with God, when you're at peace with God, peace with yourself, you ought to be at peace with your brothers and sisters or neighbors, no matter what color they are, and holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. You're not going to get in heaven if you're not learning how to live holy here on earth. You won't be able to see the Lord. Leviticus 19 and 2. I'm talking to myself tonight. Leviticus 19 and 2 says, ye shall be holy. For I, the Lord. Your God. That's why we have to be holy. Am holy. Tonight we serve a holy God. God has morals. God has scruples. God is a God of love. God is a God of judgment. God is a holy God. And since tonight we serve a holy God, his children have to be holy. Leviticus 20 and 7 says, sanctify yourselves. Set yourselves apart. Now, let me say this. 
Oh, God, keep me from drinking. God ain't going to keep you from drinking. You got to keep yourself from drinking. I used to have a problem with that. I had to learn myself. I can say, hey, uh, little Al, uh, Tiffany, uh, Debbie, keep me from drinking. No, I had to keep myself from it. You can't go over nobody's house and you know they're drinking and you trying to stop drinking. Talking about you not going to drink. You don't want it in front of you. You don't even go over to the house. Whether it's doing drugs, you don't go in the environment of drugs and say, Lord, keep me from doing drugs. Come on, talk back to me. You don't say, Lord, keep me from going over her house. Keep me from going over his house. No, the Lord is not going to keep you from going over his house or her house. And you know that you're going to get weak if you be with him. Come on, let's be real tonight. I'm being real and raw. You know you ain't got no business being around him or her because you're going to get weak. I just read it earlier about the infirmities of the flesh, the weakness of the flesh. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Come on, let's get in this Bible study tonight. This is not to point fingers at nobody. All of us need this tonight. I need it. And so we have to learn how to separate ourselves. It's certain but preachers. God bless all of them. I love them. But it's certain preachers I don't hang out with. Certain people I don't hang out with because I know brothers and sisters that if you keep hanging around it, you will become influenced by it. Birds of a feather flock together. That's why it tells us, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to be careful because a lot of times, rather than we transforming them, they conform us. So in this season, before 2021, learn how to separate yourself. Listen to what he says. Therefore, and be ye holy. There it is again, the term holy, meaning to be set apart. For I am the Lord which sanctify you. It is God who set us apart for scarred, solemn, sacred use. Now, let's, let's, let's just be truthful. Let me sit back for a minute. I just want to talk to you. I ain't, Papa, Papa ain't trying to preach. <laughs> Pastor Jay just trying to tell you. Y'all know that we would not, excuse me, teachers for using y'all. Let's just be honest. We would have never separated ourselves because we like to party. We like to drink. We like to smoke. Uh, we like to have sex. Come on, now that flesh. Come on, let's just be real. Don't cut me off tonight virtually. We like to do everything that would please and satisfy that flesh. We wouldn't have never set ourselves apart. Even though I'm a piece, I ain't never set myself apart. It was the Lord. Hallelujah tonight. I got to be, I got to get happy. It was God, watch this, who called me, who justified me. Who sanctified me. I talked a little bit about that in the parking lot. He foreknew us. He predestined us. It is God who set us apart from other homies and honeys and friends. You would have never did it yourself. The Lord set you apart. The God, God want to use you. In his service and for kingdom building. Can I teach it tonight? It disturbs me. I don't know about you that even though God's word speaks of holiness and defines holiness. Because we don't talk about this enough in the church. I ain't talking about no Pentecostal church. No uh, apostolic church. Church of Christ. Church of God and Christ. And on and on. I'm talking about Baptist folk. <laughs> Let me say that again. I'm Baptist bred. I am a Baptist fed and will be soon a Baptist dead preacher. I'm talking about Baptist folk. It disturbs me that even though God's word speaks of holiness and defines holiness and requires holiness, many are not worshiping the Lord. In the beauty, beauty, the beauty of holiness. Nothing ugly about holiness. Because when you're holy, you will be happy. 
Let me say that again. When you're holy, you will be happy. It disturbs me that there are not too many preachers who are preaching about holiness. And as a result, not too many church folk who are walking in the path of holiness. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. A lot of people ain't going to want to hang out with you. When you live a holy. You got to remember that sometime you're going to walk alone. In fact, just to talk about holiness causes some to be uncomfortable. Just to hold a conversation regarding holiness can turn some off. But don't turn me off. Let me tell you something. Don't be afraid to live holy. Don't let holiness cause you to fear. Holiness should be exemplified in our conduct and conversation, in our attitude and actions. Holiness is a lifestyle. Repeat after me. Holiness is a lifestyle. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you need to write that down, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore I beg you, I plead with you. That's what Paul is saying. Brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, y'all know tonight, brothers and sisters, God has been merciful to all of us. God has had pity on all of us. We deserve condemnation. We deserve destruction and hell but thank God on tonight he has had mercy on me the deacon you say mercy suits my case and pities my every groan by the mercies of God that ye present you have to do this your bodies a living sacrifice in the old testament they would offer up dead sacrifices unto the Lord but here Paul is saying New Testament believers must offer up yourself as a living sacrifice. Like in the Old Testament, they offered up dead sacrifices, lambs. Let me tell you, we are to be dead to the flesh. We are to deny ourselves. Listen, let me read something to you, brothers and sisters. You can go there if you want to. Romans 6. Listen, what is, listen to what it says in 11, verses 11 and 12, Romans 6, verses 11 and 12. You should be dead to sin and alive to God. Let me say that again. You're supposed to be dead to sin and alive to God. Romans 6, 11 and 12 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead, dead. Indeed, not physically dead, but you are to be spiritually dead. Watch this. Indeed unto sin, but alive spiritually unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If any man be in Christ, let me add this. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 12. Let not sin, let not you and me, let not sin therefore reign. Don't let it rule. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it set up camp in you, in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. He says, going back to Romans 12 and 1, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, there it is again, set apart. Listen acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Listen, brothers and sisters, we ought to do what is acceptable in the sight of God, what is pleasing in the sight of God. 
I don't know about you. I want to be accepted, but I want to be acceptable as well. He says unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, it is only reasonable tonight. At least we can do that. All right. That we do this. At least we can do that. Present or this present our body as a living sacrifice. God deserves it from us. Holiness is not about what we wear. Holiness is about how we walk. Holiness is not the Bible we carry. Holiness is about the Bible that carries us. Holiness is not about how high we jump when we shout. Holiness is about how well we serve when we come back down. Honesty makes us confess, and I have to confess, too, that it's hard to be clean when you reside in an unclean world. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Even if we want it to be straight laced, that's what they used to call it. And prime and proper, it's hard to pull it off tonight. Why, Pastor Jay, is it hard to pull it off? Because we live in a let your hair down society. You know, when you're in Rome, do as Rome do. Let your hair down. People go to Vegas, they just let their hair down. You forget about who you are. I remember we went to Vegas one day, my wife and I, and uh, they were witnessing in front of the Bellagio Hotel. And the guy came up to me, he witnessed to me. I said, yeah, I'm saved, you know. Uh, I'm born again, I believe. I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. You know, they pass you out all kind of brochures uh, that is illicit, <laughs> that's dirty, if you will. And uh, he said, well, tell them then. I said, well, I would let them know down here in Sin City <laughs> about Jesus Christ. And so my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that no matter where we are at, who we are around, we still must live holy. The process of moving from what we used to be to what God wants us to be, the process of moving tonight from the old me to the new me is achieved. I'm not going to leave you out there like that. By means of surrendering to the Holy Spirit. We serve a holy God. Jesus is called the Holy One of Israel. Jesus practice holiness. He is our pattern of holiness. And so tonight we surrender to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, which indwells us and lives in us, will help us to live holy. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit, you can't do this through human effort or willpower. You can't do it. You and I need the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to indwell us to live holy. Not only should you, sur uh, should you surrender to the Holy Spirit, but also, also by means of reading, studying, and I'm coming on in, obeying and applying the Holy Scriptures, the Holy, notice it says Holy Bible. The Holy Scriptures. You have to depend on the Holy Spirit and you have to get in the Word so you know the principles and precepts on how to live holy. First of all, notice sinful practices. He that is without sin in here, like Jesus was telling when the lady was caught in adultery, cast the first stone. Nobody in here can throw stones. We all living in a glass house. You can't throw no stone. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No, there's not one that doeth righteous, the Bible says. No, not one. None that's really willing to do it. And so sinful practices. 
That's what the Lord can't tolerate is the practice of sin. If you fall, you make mistakes, you sin, not intentionally. So brothers and sisters, we need to understand that we should not practice sin. Romans 6 and 12, 19a, rather. Let's read that. Romans 6, first point is sinful practices. Romans 6, verse 19a. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh. Remember I told you earlier, let me repeat it, the weakness of the flesh. For as ye have yielded, Yielded, surrendered, gave in to your members. What members? Your mouth. <laughs> your mind. Come on now. Your heart. Your feet walking in places they ain't got no business walking in. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Your members. And that other member that I'm not going to talk about in Bible class. But you are intelligent enough to know what I'm talking about. Yield your members servants to uncleanness because whoever you yield your members to, that's who you are servant to. They are your master. You are the servant. Uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, wickedness and wickedness. God can tolerate. I told you this before. Tolerate weakness, but not wickedness. Even so. Now. Yield your members, servants to righteousness, unto holiness. And so we need to understand that practice mean a habitual action or a way of doing something. Lying, cussing, stealing, sexual sins, and etc. Secondly, spiritual purification. And we know we have participated in sin, I don't care how saved you are. You at one point since you've been saved have participated in sin. Secondly, notice spiritual purification. Romans 6, 19 B. I just read it. It says, even so now you are your member servants to righteousness unto holiness in other words look mouth you better start talking right <laughs> look mind you better start thinking right you got to start thinking right heart come on come on you got to get that out of there that don't belong in your heart feet you ain't got no business walking over there and etc etc start yielding now surrendering every member of your body your vessel as servants of righteousness and holiness. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Notice where it says in the seventh chapter of 2 Corinthians, verse 1, let us, this include all of us, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, that means your body and spirit. Why, you, why did you think David said, create in me a clean heart? And renew a right spirit within me. Your heart and your mind. David said in Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Say it right now tonight in Bible class. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us cleanse. Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh. And spirit. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters. I don't want to live in a dirty house. How many want to drink out a dirty cup? How many want to live in a dirty house? You know, you go over some people's house and you see their, their bedroom is just messy, man. Just trash. 
uh, packages that they've eaten out of, uh, chip bags, everything. The room is just dirty. And I don't know about you. I don't want to sleep in a dirty, messy room. Now, if you don't want to sleep in a dirty, messy room or live in a filthy house, what makes you think God wants to live in our house? Tonight, brothers and sisters, even Pastor Jay, in this season, clean house. Repeat after me. Say, I will clean house. Say it again. I will clean my house. I ain't got time to be looking at nobody else trying to clean nobody else's house. <laughs> Tonight, as a believer in the body of Christ, I am going to clean my house personally. That's one thing about my son. I tell you, Alvin Jackson Jr., boy, that fella, boy, he ain't going to have nothing out of place. He's going to keep things neat. <laughs> and that's how we ought to be. We ought to keep things in place, keep things neat so that the Lord God, our Father, can use us on tonight. Purification, free from sin, guilt, and other defilements. Thirdly, notice the showcase of perfection. Perfection. I hear a lot of people, I ain't perfect, ain't nobody perfect but the Father. I hear that all the time. Ain't nobody perfect but the Father. You got to understand what that word means. <laughs> ain't nobody perfect but the Father. I, I can't be perfect. I, 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 that's what we hear all the time. I can't be perfect. Ain't nobody perfect but the Father. Let me explain to you what perfect means. Listen, brothers and sisters, in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, B, perfecting, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, giving God reverence and respect. Let me tell you, today I don't see a lot of people, ain't too many people really fear God, but I, 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 I say this all the time, I don't want to hang out. I don't want to be around people that don't fear God. I fear God. Am I by myself in this virtual Bible class tonight? I fear God. I reverence God. I respect God. I don't want God to catch me when he come back with my works undone. Listen. Display case of maturity. You ought to be a display case of maturity. You know, when when we were in high school, uh, they had... Uh, uh, a particular special area, a showcase of the trophies that the basketball team had won, had won the football team, uh, the swimming team, track team, and et cetera, et cetera. It was put on display for people to see. People ought to see us walking, talking, living holy. Because some folk don't never, they may never come to church, may never read the Bible, but they ought to see holiness in our lives. Look at somebody tell them we like fish in the bowl. They looking at us, especially preachers. A model of growth and development. That's what we ought to be. Fully established in Christ. Talking about the showcase of perfection. Jesus said, and I'm going to be out of here. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. God told Abraham, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. In other words, be mature. Look at somebody and tell them it's time for us to be mature. Let me read Hebrews 6, but I'm going to read it from the Amplified Version. Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. This is the Amplified Version. Therefore, let us get past the elementary stage in the teachings about the Christ, advancing on to maturity and perfection and spiritual completeness, doing this without laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of Faith towards God. How many times you're going to have to keep repenting of the same thing? Oh, Lord, I don't do it again. Here I am back, Lord, before the throne of grace. Grace, I'm repenting of the same thing. Those dead, evil works. 
and faith. How many times got to keep going over letting you know you got to have faith in God in these days and time of teaching about washings, ritual purifications, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. These are all important matters in which you should have been proficient long ago. You should have learned that a long time ago. You can't continue to stay spiritually in kindergarten. <laughs> Still learning the ABC. You got to mature. You got to grow up. You got to move on towards spiritual perfection. Let me read it in the message Bible. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2 says, so come on, let's leave the preschool finger painting. <laughs> Exercises on Christ and get on with the grand work of art. Grow up in Christ. The basic foundational truths are in place. Turning your back on salvation by self-help. Turning in trust toward God. Listen to what he says. <laughs> Baptismal instructions. Boy, this is rich. Laying on of hands. Resurrection of the dead. Eternal judgment. What is the writer saying here? How many times you got to be baptized? You want to go in the water, back and forth, back and forth. Pastor, I need to get baptized. You know, got on, got dirty, you know, got filthy, you know, got out, got out there and sin. Lord, I got to go back in. Let me tell you, you can go in that water a hundred times. You're going to go down wet and come up wet. They used to say you're going to go down a wet devil and come up a dry devil. Go down dry devil and come up wet. I ain't calling you no devil. You just go down wet, I mean dry, and come up wet. And you still have the same struggle with sin. How many times are you going to keep being baptized? You don't need to be baptized with water over and over. But let me tell you what you need to be baptized over again. You need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost again. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost again. You need to ask God to infill you. You remember I told you earlier to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Laying on hands. Oh, my God. Y'all help me on this Bible class night. And I, 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 I promise you, and I'm out of here in a little while. Listen, how many times... Do the pastor have to keep laying hands on you? When we was in this church, in this building, so many people, same people run up to the altar. Pastor, lay your hands on me. Pastor, lay your hands They Back it off. First of all, you know, lay my hands on them that Sunday. Come back. They let one Sunday pass. Come back next Sunday. Lay your hands on me. Pastor, I'm out there. I'm struggling. I'm up there in sin. Pastor, I'm failed again. I, I don't did wrong again. Pastor, lay your hand. How many times do you have to keep laying your hands on them? That, that's elementary. You got to get past that now. And... Watch this resurrection of the dead. You know, one day we will be raised from death to life. How many times got to keep going over that? You already know that as a believer, you know, so you have hope. Oh, I feel the anointing. You got to keep having hope. Don't dwell in despair. That's your hope of a better day, of a new life, of a new world, a new heaven and a new earth. How many times got to keep going over that? You're not just going to die and stay fertilizer for the vegetations and the grass and et cetera. You, your body going back to the dirt, but the spirit going back to God. How many times we got to keep going over that? You know, there's a resurrection come a general resurrection. We are all the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's elementary. That's ABCs. We shouldn't keep going over that. That's what he's saying. And knowing that one day eternal judgment is coming. Don't worry about the wicked. Don't worry about those who are diabolical. Don't worry about those who are practicing and living in sin. They will be punished. That day is coming when he shall judge the wicked at the white throne judgment. So he ain't, we ain't got to keep going over. That's what he's saying. Elementary. ABCs. <laughs> it's time for you to get out of kindergarten. <laughs> especially during this pandemic. Especially during this time of trial. You got to come out of kindergarten. Can't keep going over it. I hear Lady J when she's teaching. She said, now, look, you come in here later. I can't go back over the same thing. You should have been here to listen. Then here go the other ones who have advanced. I got to keep going over the same thing. I'm not going to do it. Now, if brothers and sisters, watch this. We can't rather go for Christ if we don't grow in Christ. Oh, I think you better push light. You better push heart. We can't go for Christ if we don't grow in Christ. Finally, notice the sure promises of God. And I, I enjoy teaching you tonight. 
2 Corinthians 7 and 1 says, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, having therefore these promises. Then he called you dearly beloved. Isn't that a blessing to know that you are dearly beloved? Put your hand on yourself and learn how to love yourself, but be thankful tonight that you are God's dearly beloved. You are the beloved of God, the beloved of him. Listen, having therefore these promises. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you got to stand on the promises of God tonight. God has promised his provisions. He will provide. He will make a way out of nowhere. You've heard it. He will meet our needs. He has promised us his presence. When you thought you was by yourself, God was with you all the time. He's promised us his power. God have moved in miraculous ways in our life. Man, I'm getting excited because I'm on the promise. I'm not going to let the problems of this world overwhelm me because I am on his promises. Listen, the promise of a permanent paradise. Listen tonight. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 says, and I'm closing, and on a highway shall be there. And a way, it shall be called the way of holiness. He says, the unclean shall not pass over it. And finish reading that chapter on tonight. Let me tell you, as I close on tonight, that's why I want to come back to holiness. That's why tonight I am asking, pleading, begging you. As a believer in the body, come on back to holiness because it's a way of holiness. It's a highway. Let me tell you what we used to sing, and I'm out of here. I'm, going, it's, I'm getting ready to bounce. It's a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. It's a highway to heaven. Walking up the king's highway. My way gets brighter. My load gets lighter. Walking up the king's highway. There's joy in knowing with him I'm going. Walking. Oh, let me say that again. Walking up, 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 up the king's high. Way. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear God, our Father, we come to thee in sincerity tonight. We come earnestly, Lord. We need your help. We need an infusion of the Holy Ghost to help us to live holy. Lord, we, we, we must admit sometime we've said words we had no business saying. We've, we're thinking some thoughts we had no business thinking thinking about we've uh done some things we had no business doing lord help us to live sanctified holy consecrated to move on towards perfection dare to be different like daniel live your life in us and through us help us god to live holy in your presence to give you the honor the glory and praise clean us up Wash us, purify us, forgive us, God. Have mercy on us tonight. Do a new thing in us. We are your vessels, your instruments in your hand. And we want to be holy from our head to our toe, inside and out. Is our prayer tonight, our humble, sincere prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. There are three ways that you can give. And it's on the screen. And I pray that your giving will not be in vain. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, God is going to give back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. God bless you tonight. I love you with the love of God.